name is Reed Kaplan. I'm the Associate Director of Advocacy and Development at ASAN, and my advocacy journey began with the JRC. I had just gotten out of an institution and had no certainty as to if or when I would return to one. All I knew is that I would rather die than go back. My story echoes many that I've heard in the disability community. I had never gotten to live my life for myself before, so I wanted to make sure others like me got the chance to. That meant ending the torture in institutions for good. I found an online group for survivors of institutional abuse. I didn't feel like a survivor, but I knew I couldn't become one alone, and that is what led me to the JRC. That was in 2009. That was 10 years ago. I later learned that attempts to stop the shock of the JRC go as far back as the 80s, at least 30 years if not more, and we are still waiting. The people with disabilities warehoused in the JRC are still waiting. When you're in an institution, every day can feel like a decade. I wonder if they ask themselves the questions that I asked myself when I was in their shoes. How many of the eggshells that I'm walking on will crack today? Will I know where I went wrong? Will anyone bother to tell me? What will my torture look like? How many pieces of my personhood will be taken from me? And how many people will tell me this is for my own good? How many people will smile and say I deserve it? There are disabled children who have grown up into disabled adults that have never known what freedom looks like. They have never known a day without torture. They have never known what it feels like to be treated as human beings who matter. And that is why disability rights advocates say we would rather die than be in an institution. And that is why the disability rights movement can't die until the world sees torture for what it is. Until nobody can say that torture is for our own good until nobody sees disability as a reason to be locked away and shocked as a punishment for our existence. I can say pretty confidently that none of us want to be here today, but we have to be for all the people at the JRC that can't be. We wait and we witness and we mourn and we struggle and we act and slowly the world changes. At times it feels like chipping away at a mountain with a butter knife. It can be discouraging for a decade to pass and to still feel as if I'm at the starting line. But I'm closer to the finish than I've ever been before. I'm a survivor and I know with all of you today that I am not alone. My advocacy journey began with the JRC and 10 years later, I am still waiting. And even if, when we stop the shock and even when the JRC shuts its doors for good, not if, when, I know my advocacy journey won't be over, because if I would rather die than live in an institution, then I can't stop until all of us are free. And the fight for that freedom started long before I was here and will continue long after I'm gone. But today, I'm here where I started, and I'll be waiting here until it ends. Thank you.